Giratina is out and Yuxi is in. That is, if you're in the Asia Pacific region. If you're curious about Azelf and Mesprit, I do have other videos on that already. Link in the descriptions to those. But if you're curious about Yuxi, or maybe you're having to deal with Yuxi in your homeland, well, this video is for you. Before we get into how to best counter Yuxi and its use in the meta, I do want to establish one thing with everybody here, and that is that it's pronounced Yuxi, not Uxi. Here we got the official name pronunciation guide. And if you scroll all the way through all the Pokemon and how to properly pronounce them, you can get all the way down to Gen 4. And when you're in Gen 4, you, you roll up on this guy, and what do we have here? Does that say Uxi? Uh, I think that says Yuxi. So, Yuxi, how it's pronounced. Why are you giving me that look? Pronouncing Pokemon names is serious business, babe. The sooner you realize this, the sooner you can get on my level. So we got Yuxi here, the little yellow bean. And compared to its uh, trio brethren, it is more defensively oriented. So Mesprit, more middle of the road. Azelf, more offensively oriented. But Yuxi here, kind of tanky. As far as its move pool goes, it has Confusion, Extra Sensory, Future Sight, and Swift just like the rest of them, and then for the flavor move, we have Thunder. This makes countering it very similar to how you counter the other two, except uh, I guess you have to be a little bit wary of the Thunder, maybe? Thunder's a pretty weak attack, so I think it's uh, a little bit of a non-issue. What is an issue, however, is that massive defense stat, yeah. So where Azelf is a very easy duo, and Mesprit is a very easy trio, Yuxi, you kinda, you kinda have to try a little bit if you wanna low man it with three people. The quad, very easy. You only need 12.5 uh, DPS each, so everything featured here starts at 14 DPS, so even a lowly 25.5 Houndoom is able to make the quad. But if you wanna go for the trio, uh, <laughs> Uh, Tyranitar is not really cutting it anymore. Yeah, so Azelf, Mesprit, all you gotta do is pick Tyranitar and close your eyes and turn off your mind. Here, uh, well, you might have to, uh, start working in some high-level Mewtwo's and Weavile's and Giratina Origin forms. So if you haven't powered up Giratina Origin form already, very powerful Ghost-type Pokemon, arguably the most powerful Ghost-type Pokemon for generations to come. And if you're in the Asia-Pacific region and you have to deal with Yuxi here, and you're already not having a good time trying to beat it, well, powering up at least one Giratina Origin form would definitely be in your favor. Uh, if you're curious about the level 39.5 with the asterisks here, uh, <laughs> let me just introduce these graphs to you in general if you're not familiar. Yeah, so this is using uh, level 40 counters, unless stated otherwise, against a tier 5 Yuxi raid using confusion and all of its charge moves to give you a good idea of the more aggressive counters to this raid. No dodging and best friendship. The y-axis here is damage per second, DPS, so how fast you deal damage, and then the x-axis here is the total damage output, so the percent of damage your Pokemon will deal to the raid boss on average before going down. Uh, so the more up and to the right you are, the more powerful and better your Pokemon is as a counter. And then since your ability to do a duo, a trio, a quad, etc. is based off of your DPS, well that's where we get the, uh, the trio line from. Do keep in mind that the closer you are to the trio line, the more flaky it becomes because relobbying or other circumstances can kind of tip the scales one way or another, lower your baseline DPS just enough to miss it. So the higher above you are of my trio line, uh, the better off you're probably going to be. Giratina origin form here. So normally along these lines, I consider breakpoints and bulk points. Level 30, for example, is a bulk point. Well, the level 39.5 is a pre-breakpoint. Yeah, Giratina Origin Form happens to have a level 40 breakpoint, which means you need to have a 15 attack IV Giratina Origin Form at level 40 to get this peak level of performance. Just before that breakpoint, level 39.5, well, this is where your power is going to be. So a little bit of a clip down. So level 40 with the 15 attack IV, way better than Mewtwo. But if you're missing out on that, then you're like slightly better than Mewtwo, all things considered. Uh, so Mewtwo's still really good for this fight. Uh, Weavile, definitely an excellent option here. Uh, level 32 it is able to help out in the trio. Uh, you might not want to rely on low-level Weaviles, but they're definitely helpful. Uh, then we've got the Rainy Weather Boys here, and in my previous graphs, I didn't include Rainy Weather Breakpoints because I didn't think it'd be super relevant because you're already meeting the duo and the trio requirements. Like, regardless, it's, it's not hard. 
Uh, but since this raid is a little bit tougher than the other ones, I decided to include uh, their breakpoints here so you get an idea of where you can cut off and still do well with the rainy weather. So, yeah, got those guys. Um, going on over, you can see Gengar is getting a little complicated here. Yeah, so at max level, or at the very least above level 37, that is the breakpoint for both Shadow Claw and Lick. Uh, Shadow Claw and Lick are going to be performing similarly. But when you break it down to their bulk point, um, throwing off my flow for the Gengar here. That's right, go take a nap. Um, yeah, going down to their bulk point, level 34, both Shadow Claw and Lick still performing similarly. But then when you get to Shadow Claw's break point, which is 26.5, well, that's an area where Shadow Claw will be going well above the Lick. This is level 26.5 in relationship to Shadow Claw's breakpoint, but this is a lick. The lick doesn't have a breakpoint. They're both meeting a bulk point at that level, conveniently enough. So until you get to like about level 34, Shadow Claw will be outperforming the lick. But if you're all the way down to level 21.5, well, then they're performing similarly again. So in a sense, they perform similarly up until level 26.5, at which point Shadow Claw is going to be the better attack. But then once you power up past level 34, well, then they're back to being even Steven. I know, Shadow Claw, Lick, complicated stuff here. Uh, normally, I don't include these many points for the Gengar Sims, but once again, because the trio is a little bit more effort based, I, I wanted to make sure you guys had a full spectrum idea of what's going on with Gengar here. Then, moving on even further to the left, we have Deoxys Attack Form. Now, in neutral weather, Deoxys Attack Form isn't able to compete with the upper echelons of Gengar having similar DPS, but not quite their DPS, right? But if it's cloudy outside, which means it's poison jab, gets a boost, well, the cloudy weather poison jab Deoxys attack form is actually above Gengar in terms of damage per second. So something you might want to keep in mind, maybe you're into Poke Draft, maybe you've already maxed out a Deoxys attack form because of that peak niche DPS it can get sometimes. Uh, this is definitely a raid where you might want to whip it out. And if it is cloudy outside and you have like a middled powered up kind of Deoxys attack form, well, it does meet a breakpoint at level 29 in the cloudy weather, which helps contribute to the trio. So if you are trying to build up the highest DPS you can possibly on like a budget, well, then that could be a, a route for you, a little avenue. Um, definitely not super advisable to power up a Deoxys attack form, but when it matters, it matters. And this is a fight where it slightly matters. I think it's uh, Azelf where having a Deoxys attack form is a little bit more spicy though, but a little a little spice for the Yuxi raid. So in general, if you're just interested in plowing this raid down, you're not too concerned about DPS, you just want to have an easy good time, well Tyranitars are overall basically where it's at. You don't even have to think, you probably won't even have to re-lobby. Uh, if you want a little bit more damage, you can rope in your Shadow Ball Mewtwo's, and if you have powered up the Giratina Origin form already, definitely a Pokemon I recommend powering up at least one or two of, because it is such a powerful Ghost-type Pokemon. Uh, well, these guys will also serve you quite well too. Uh, any Dark type featured here, and all the Bug types, also very good. Obviously in rainy weather, the bug types are going to be a little bit more spicy too. Uh, even at like level 30, they'll all be meeting their breakpoints, so that's awesome too. Um, and Gengar, Gengar definitely has some nice easy DPS going on here. So if you are lacking in the Giratina origin forms and you do want to try to potentiate the trio, or maybe, you know, you got to carry the, the Agron squads, <laughs> you know, you just you got to be the driving wheel to save the raid. Uh, well, Gengar and uh, Deoxys attack form can be two routes to, to help that out. Pretty easy raid, definitely the hardest of the trio to beat because it's such a thick boy. Uh, but definitely not complicated by any stretch. What is this? Instacart? Well, okay. Welcome, Steph T, to Swag Tips. So as far as Yuxi goes in the meta, as far as PvE is concerned, so being a raid attacker or a gym attacker, uh, yeah, like having a 156 attack stat, uh, definitely not doing any favors. Like even Steph T from Instacart, uh, you know, she's that's that's not just her smiling because she gets to go to the park instead of the grocery store. Now she's laughing at this clown attack stat. But you know what? One arena where a clown attack stat and really high defenses does make a difference. We're talking about Great League PvP right here. Let's shift gears and go to PV Poke over here. PV Poke, right? And uh, the biggest competition I'd say Yuxi has in the Great League would be to the Legacy Hypno. Yeah. 
And uh, looking at their converted stats, so CP1500 converted stats here, uh, you can see that Yuxi has more stats, but what really matters is the bulk. And if you add up like the 178 with the 119 and the 140 with the 144, they're very comparable in terms of bulk, like Yuxi a little bit higher. Uh, what matters to me though, and why I feel holds Yuxi back when compared to the Legacy Hypno is in the charge moves, Future Sight, Thunder, the other attack Swift, so whatever, right? When you're comparing that to Shadow Ball or Psy Shock, Shadow Ball and Psy Shock are definitely way more useful, way earlier, better coverage. So Yuxi, I'm sorry, Legacy Hypno kind of has you beat here. Hypno aside, taking a stroll down Confusion Lane here, we can see we got other Titans such as Bronzong, Claydol, we got Gallade, Gardevoir, and other ones too, like uh, what? We got Mr. Mime, the slow dudes. Well, slow dudes, nah, nah, not nah, as relevant. Venomoth, kind of relevant, depending on what great league Sylpharina Cup you got going on. Uh, at the end of the day, a lot of these other Confusion users have more relevant resistances. Uh, I guess the key example here is Bronzong, right? Yeah, that definitely kind of hold them above that of the Yuxi. In general, when it comes to PvP and these cups and the Great League, stuff like that, uh, having a powerful attack and few weaknesses is definitely a benefit, but when you are looking at competition and you are looking at the different flavor of cups and stuff like that, I feel like relevant resistances also come into play in a really big way. And for that reason, I think that's another kind of foot in the grave when it comes to Yuxi. So I feel like if you were to invest in a Yuxi for a Great League PvP, it wouldn't be a bad investment. I mean, there's certainly worse investments to make. Uh, but overall, I don't feel like it's all that hot. I think using a different Confusion user will probably serve your team a little bit better. So if you are sitting at home, you're not in the Asia Pacific region, you're just like, why do they get the cool PvP Pokemon? Come on, man. Uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think you're uh, fine without it. Plenty of other options to use. You could also think about Yuxi as being a good option for the Ultra League since it does meet roughly 2,500 CP, so gets the full utilization of all those stats, right? Um, but overall, that league is dominated by the Giratinas, so I don't see uh, a Psychic type. It's going to have a little bit of a little rough of a time there, right? And then another good Pokemon in that league to complement the Giratinas is the uh, the Lucario. So definitely, definitely a lot of stuff working against the Yuxi really standing out in the Ultra League. So definitely not a terrible Pokemon. I just feel like there's better options out there. So there you have it. Yuxi, how to counter it how to pronounce its name, and its use in the meta. Uh, pretty easy to beat, just gotta use the dark types as always. I say easy though, compared to the other two of the trio, it's definitely the hardest one, because defense stat making it really bulky. But at the end of the day, just plow it with ghost and dark and bug type Pokemon, and you got this. As far as its use in the meta goes, I think it goes without saying, PvE content, definitely not its thing. PvP content, could be useful. I feel like there's better Pokemon to use for Yuxi's role in PvP, uh, but hey, it's a solid general option. Maybe you got the one with the right stats. May as well try it out. If you enjoyed this content, you wanna see more like it, well then make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. If you got any questions on this content that you want answered, well then comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. Swag. And if you've been following along with the uh, the trio, the three uploads here, right? You're curious what team could Yuxi be on. Well, there's only one team left to pick, and that is Team Mystic. One thing that also works into Yuxi being a Team Mystic Pokemon is when you get to the the treasures of Japan, uh, Yuxi ends up being the shield, and the shield relates to wisdom, right? And when you talk to Blanche early on in Pokemon Go, she's talking to you about how like wisdom and you know stuff like that that guides your decision making for Pokemon and all that jazz. So definitely a direct correlation between Yuxi and Team Mystic, similar to how there's a direct correlation to Azelf and Valor being the sword, sword, Valor. Then we got Mesprit, which is like emotion, and uh, I guess that could be instinct, right? 